continuing to work in my sketchbook and uh, I picked random items. Uh, it really doesn't matter, it's all practice. So I thought I'd add this barn. This is a photograph I took here in Greensboro uh, a few years ago, actually, but uh, let's just sketch this building in. I'm getting the sides of the building. Try to get the proportions right. That angle of the roof needs to match it over here. There's the thickness of the overhang. And there's a slope right here. So let's put this slope in too. And then there's a long roof. This tobacco barn had this long roof on it. And let's just put a metal roof. It's got a metal roof on it. So a way to put a metal roof on is to not start at the edge and work your way across. Start in the middle, matching the angle of the sides, divide it into quarters, and then go divide it again. That way you don't have to worry about running out of space to get it uh, the right thickness. Okay, if that's that. Okay, let's just start painting. So you can get in there quickly, do your sketch, and start painting quite fast. Okay. So it's got a very neutral sky. I think I'll stay away from the sky just for time's sake, because I want these to be quick little studies. Um, not a lot of preparation, mostly a quick sketch and painting. So since this is dark, I can just kind of paint right through there, this tree line. And it comes over on this side. So I'm not worried about the barn. Before that soaks in, it gives me a hard edge. I'm just going to soften it. So that gives me a base to work from. Now I'll build up from that with some uh, ultramarine blue, some uh, some Payne's gray. Push it. I'm actually going to put some burnt sienna in there. I think that'd be kind of nice. There we go. I kind of like the sky peeking through right there. Even though it's not in my reference, I'm going to leave that. But while that's damp like that, I can come back with clear water and just give it a light splatter. And hopefully that shows up on the camera, the detail it gives you. Just subtle little changes in value. All right, I'm going to dry that. Okay, let's go right to the uh, tobacco barn. Burnt umber, a little bit of my ultramarine blue, and just test it on my test sheet, see if it's uh, what I want. It's more of a grayed down color, so it's not... Uh, it's not a strong brown by any means. And I'm gonna lay in what I call juicy washes. A lot of water, not a lot of pigment, but just enough. That way I don't have to worry about getting hard edges. I got a nice wet puddle in there. I can just relax, take my time. I think I'll go dark on this side. This is a number 10 round brush. If it's got a decent point, you can work that size. Otherwise, I'd go down to a, you know, a six or something. Now the roof, the overhang from this roof is going to create a shadow. So we definitely need to go darker underneath here. If I get a puddle and I don't want that there, I'll just take a damp brush, just kind of push it off to the side. We've got this extended roof area. Take a script brush. Now I'm not doing this uh, quite the way I normally would because I try to keep my hand out of the way of the camera. Go 
darker with the overhang. Now, I've, I think I've shown you before in some of the videos that if I want to put a thin line in here, and I like on this roof, it's kind of hard to do that stop right at that point. That's the time where you can get out a little sticky note and just kind of take a couple practice runs at it. That way it's in, it doesn't run over on top of the building, and it just makes life a lot easier. All right, so I'm going to go with a burnt umber, a little bit of Payne's Gray, and we'll get a little bit of this, the individual logs on the side of the building. So again, I used a sticky note. That way I don't have to put the brakes on. And this way my lines can be much more delicate. You start trying to match a line up, you go slow and the lines get thicker and they just don't have the same quality to them. So I'm just gonna come in here again, divide this up, these, all, these individual logs. And I can do the same thing on this side. And we're going back in perspective now, so they're gonna be going a little bit on the diagonal downhill. This is going to mostly be in shadow, so we don't not too concerned about that. What's nice about these old barns or old farmhouses is uh, you don't have to be perfect. Uh, they're falling, a lot of them are falling apart. They're way past their prime, um, and so loose, squiggly lines uh, don't create a problem. Just filling that value in there a little bit. Okay, let's go to the roof now on this metal roof. Um, so I see a kind of a steel blue up on top. So I'm going to take a little bit of ultra. Let's just kind of lay that in. I'll lay that over the whole roof, even the whole roof isn't going to be a blue. Now I'm going to look at that value. Is that what I want or do I need to push it a little bit? Let's go down. A little bit darker is better. Okay, now while that's wet, now I'll come in there with some burnt sienna. And that'll give us that rust look. I've got my uh, sketchbook on a no three ring binder, so it gives me a little slant to help me control where the color is going to go. If I was laying flat, this would run all the way up to the top of the roof, and I don't want that. Break up that hard edge. I'm going to take some ultramarine blue and just kind of wash this side a little darker. At the same time, it's loosening up the indication of those timbers. And it's a very subtle uh, shift to the blue, but the blue is a cool uh, color temperature-wise, and so that works great for shadow areas. Again, I'll go to my sticky note. Get into some of these umbers and rust colors and just kind of look at what I've put on there. Okay, and there is the line that goes all the way across the top. And I think on these logs here, the siding of the building, I think we can just kind of play with the color a little bit. Maybe just put a little bit of real pale yellow wash, in, at least in part of it, just to kind of warm it up a little bit. And then we've got the, uh, then we have the ultramarine blue, the cool temperature right there. Okay, so while that's drying, let's throw a couple quick strokes in the foreground. I'm gonna take some uh, cadmium yellow medium, some sap green. And I'll take some yellow ochre in there too. Now again, I'm gonna make some quick strokes with my mop brush. I'll take a couple practice runs, get the feel for it, then I'll lay the brush down.
wet brush, just water. Fan the brush out, get a little texture, indication of grasses. I'll go back to my yellow with my sap green and uh, just indicate some of the green that's in the painting. Just very randomly put it in. And if I don't want it to be that distinct, I'll just take a spray bottle and, uh, and soften it a little bit. Now I'm going to go to my small mop brush, ultramarine blue, sap green. Put these dark uh, evergreens or pines in there. So I fan this brush out. It works great if you fan it out. I'm barely touching the paper. Just the hairs on the end of the brush are touching the, the paper. And if we want to put one over here, we can too. And I'll go to my script brush and indicate maybe a few tree limbs. This one tree is right in the front of the building here. Here I'm using my script brush. And I do, I use what I call a stutter stroke. You don't want these limbs to uh, look too straight or too rigid. A lot of smaller trees, a lot of brush in here. Just kind of squiggle that in. Just kind of have fun with it. So I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching.